Hey everybody, Dr. Brad Bodle here and thanks for joining me again. In today's video, I want to go over what I wish every person with Hashimoto's would know because quite frankly, these conditions are very hard to deal with and if we're not careful, they can beat us up mentally and emotionally. And if this is your first time on my channel, this might be a weird video to start with. Usually I do videos that are very targeted and strategic. They help you to better understand your thyroid labs and also make changes. That way you can start to see improvements in your health. And uh, if that's what you're looking for, I really encourage you to check out some of my other content. Um, and of course, if you like this kind of stuff, if you're interested in natural strategies that actually helps you feel better and actually work, um, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. I think there's a lot of value for you here. Now, I wanted to start off today with a story about one of my most favorite people who was actually one of my patients and was the first time I worked with someone who had chronic thyroid issues. Now, at the time, I was still in student clinic and when my patient came to me, it seemed like she had relatively straightforward symptoms. She had been dealing with widespread muscle and joint pain with most of it occurring in her upper back and neck. Now, she had seen a lot of other practitioners for this, and usually she saw a little bit relief of relief whenever she got therapies done, but it never seemed to last. And I told her I was more than happy to do some things to help her out with that, to work on that, um, but I also didn't think I was necessarily magical. And I told her that the fact that she had had other sort of anti-inflammatory and musculoskeletal treatments done for her, but it didn't give her that lasting change, suggested to me that something else was going on. So we started to talk and as we dug into things, we found out that she was also dealing with significant fatigue. She had some pretty substantial GI and bowel issues and she had been diagnosed with low thyroid 20 some odd years ago and, and had been taking medication ever since that time. And so what I told her was, look, I think that some of these metabolic issues are contributing to the way your muscles and joints are feeling. And until we get that stuff addressed, we're never going to be able to overcome some of these symptoms, no matter how many physical modalities and treatment protocols we throw at you. And so she said, okay, I'm game. Let's look into this a little bit more. And what we had done was we ran a more comprehensive lab panel and we ran an expanded thyroid panel. She had only had TSH checked up until that point. Well, when we got the labs back, we found out that she had positive thyroid antibodies, which was indicative of Hashimoto's, so an autoimmune condition, which was damaging her thyroid and causing inflammation in the body. And I specifically remember at that time, her doctor wrote me a note which said, this is an interesting academic finding but has no bearing on her actual course of care. Essentially saying to me, I know you're in school and I know you're trying to do your best for your patient. Um, and yeah, this stuff is interesting when we look at it on the lab report, but it really doesn't mean anything for how we treat and approach this person. And that really bothered me at the time. And you know, it wasn't my first foray into the medical system. And I had understood before that there were some issues with the way they approach things. And I'm sure that what I'm describing to you guys right now is nothing new to you. I'm sure you guys have all been through something uh, very similar. And, um, you know, unfortunately, that is the thing that we run into a lot is people tend to see this stuff come up over and over again. But my big problem with this is, sure, okay, you think that the findings are academic, but are we going to continue to let our patient feel like this? It wasn't like she was feeling fine, had no symptoms, and then on a regular blood report, we had one marker that was outside the normal range and that may or may not have an impact for her future health. She was actively having symptoms. She had a history of thyroid problems. And by saying that this was just an academic issue was essentially saying that, yep, you know what, we're not gonna do anything about this and you're going to continue to feel the way that you feel. And as I said, I know a lot of you have been through the same thing. And when we look at these kind of responses on a spectrum, uh, no matter which way you shake it, none of them are very good at respecting you as a person and actually being proactive in helping you get better. On one end, this type of approach is very dismissive. Uh, you know, it's saying, 
you know what, these are the symptoms and you just need to learn how to deal with it, which I think is a terrible way to approach things, especially if that doctor isn't experiencing those symptoms on a day-to-day -day basis and doesn't know what it's really like. And on the other side, it's essentially gaslighting, you guys, and I know that's a pretty extreme term to use. But even if it's unintentional, and I know usually intentionality goes with gaslighting, if someone is creating a narrative that makes you second guess your own experiences and your own reality, then not only is that preventing you from getting better, but it's also creating a huge stressor in your life where you have disconnect between what your expectations are, how you feel, and what you're being told from your practitioners. And if you go into the doctor knowing that you have certain symptoms like fatigue, like hair loss, um, like problems with your sleeping, and they come back to you and say, you know what, this isn't real, this is all in your head, um, that's super hard on people, and I think that's the last thing that I want any of you guys to, go, to have to go through. But what it comes down to is most doctors have a fundamental misunderstanding of how Hashimoto's works. And let me be super clear, that does not justify any of the dismissiveness any of the gaslighting, any of the way that they treat you. Ignorance is not an excuse, and this doesn't mean that they can disrespect people and how they feel. However, when it comes to Hashimoto's, most doctors do not understand that one, it is an autoimmune condition first rather than a thyroid disorder, and two, it is a progressive condition that takes place over many years. Those antibodies that came back as positive on my patient's test and the same ones that many of you guys have can show up seven years before someone is diagnosed with hypothyroidism. And while it is true that not everyone with thyroid antibodies will eventually develop hypothyroidism, there's a ton of evidence in the literature that says if you have positive antibodies and you have thyroid symptoms, it's indicative that there is ongoing damage occurring at the thyroid gland, and with that, there's inflammation that can then block our body's utilization of the thyroid hormone that is available to it. This means that someone can have ongoing thyroid symptoms for years. But as we said, it's a progression, and until there's enough damage that causes a change in TSH, which is the only marker that most doctors are going to look at because that is the marker that most readily responds to medication, they're not going to do anything about it, nor will they think that your problems are thyroid related. Which brings up kind of a weird dichotomy. Before you are diagnosed with hypothyroidism, when you're in those early stages of Hashimoto's, your doctor doesn't think that it has anything to do with your thyroid because the TSH looks fine. Once you eventually get to that point where the TSH changes and you're provided with medication, your doctor also doesn't think any residual symptoms that you might have are thyroid related because they'll say, well, you've already been given the medication, so you know that fixes that problem. We don't have any thyroid problems anymore. You know, Forget the fact that thyroid hormone replacement doesn't do anything to manage the autoimmune aspect of things, but um, yeah, that, uh, that weight gain that you're having, those sleep issues that you're having, as we said before, the hair loss, the fatigue, all the stuff that goes with thyroid, yeah, that can't be thyroid related because we fix the problem by giving you medication. And while some people definitely need some extra support from medication, and it's an important piece that we get figured out, if that was the only thing that people needed, then they would take their medication and all of their symptoms would improve. But time and time again, that is not the case. And the question that I would pose to everyone is, if you're having symptoms that are not thyroid related, as your doctor is telling you, then shouldn't we dig a little bit deeper and actually look into them and figure out what is causing those other symptoms? Because the last thing that I want for you is for you to feel like, your health is on this continual downhill slope and it's going to keep getting worse for as long as you live because you're already doing everything that you can to support your health. So here's the deal. Although getting a diagnosis of Hashimoto's can be disheartening, if we understand it, then we can be proactive about it. Yes, Hashimoto's is an autoimmune condition and yes, 
these tend to be progressive in nature due to the fact that your immune system will always have memory for your thyroid gland and therefore whenever there is an increase in stress on your body there's an increased likelihood that your symptoms will flare up. But if we approach things holistically and do things to support your body that are individualized to your needs, then we can expect you to have a reduction in symptoms, a reduction in the frequency of flare-ups, and an overall high quality of life that allows you to participate in it the way that you want to. So even though it can be hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel, especially when your symptoms are at their worst, and I know that what I'm about to say might sound impossible to you based on all your previous experiences, but there is hope with these conditions and you can get better. But you need to remember that you are not alone in this journey and you need to be patient with yourself because these thyroid conditions are so challenging. But I hope that you guys found this information useful today. As I said at the beginning of the video, this was a little bit of a detour from our normal routine, um, but I thought it was something that needed to be said and hopefully you really connected with the message. Moving forward, I'm really excited because I've got a bunch of cool things planned for you guys that should continue to help you out with your health. Things like new content, new downloads, and potentially a new course if that's something that you guys are interested in. But if there's anything you need, you're always welcome to reach out. I care about you guys and want you to do well. My name is Dr. Brad Bodel. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, and I'll see you guys real soon.